I had interdisciplinary training and had a lot of time to choose. I uh, started out interested in medicine and language and the brain and then discovered psychology and discovered a little bit of the uh, computer science engineering piece about language. And so it was looking at all of those fields and their intersect that uh, allowed me to choose this one as the place to, to land for an exciting set of studies. Uh, follow your passion. Uh, I remember uh, when I was a graduate student planning on the MD-PhD program, my advisor died of cancer in the first nine months that I was there, so my entire life plan was thwarted. And by that time, though, I had a very clear passion to study language in the brain. And I remember going back to the University of Minnesota where I was working on my PhD, and my advisor said, follow your passion, don't worry about anything else. And it was absolutely the best advice I ever received. Uh, I used to uh, I used to love playing in the woods by myself, uh, creating scenarios, and I would sort of set up uh, things in the woods to to see how the world worked and and play kind of in a in a sort of creative, fascinating way, and I still enjoy. Uh, private thought time and, and actually as you uh, get busier and busier the thing I, I treasure most is time to just think in a playful uh, way and it doesn't have to be in a woods anymore uh, I, I, you know I love to be on a beach or in a new city or just just completely exploring things on my own is a very good is a very good way for me to think I love surprise I think discovery and surprise, it's almost childlike. This sense of awe at what you, at what you learn. Uh, I hope I never find a time as a scientist where I can predict every single outcome because there's no substitute for being the first in the world and the only in the world because you've just at that moment, you're the only person who knows how a study has come out. And it's this new little, little piece, it's just a dot but it's, it's a piece in that puzzle, and when you can put that piece in that puzzle, it's, it's a really, really exciting thing. Well, I think curiosity. I think you really have to have a drive to want to know something that's thus far unknown, because it takes so much patience and it takes so much work. It's such hard work that unless you had a driving curiosity for what you are about to discover uh, and a patience to wait for it because you know every scientist knows that on the way to the discovery you've made 60 false starts uh, I tell my graduate students it takes five years to discover anything important because you've taken all these steps that don't work experiments that fail uh, a technique that you think is going to work it doesn't work uh, an idea uh, envisioned, but, but one that doesn't exactly give you the answer that you were trying to seek. You've got to be patient. You've got to have a drive, really strong curiosity drive. Well, I think that it's very easy to connect the science of learning, particularly in a child's brain, that's my own specialty, with the public need to know what's happening in the first five years up in that little brain. I think that we have a lot to, um, to take from a societal standpoint from this work. Uh, first five years of life are an absolutely amazing time and the tools of modern neuroscience are showing us that it's rocket science going on up there. So these five years are five years that can't be wasted and not only in American children but in children all over the globe. This is a global resource and we really have to take seriously what's happening during that period. I think they're, they come from different areas. I've been, you know, in the beginning my father was interested in chemistry and so there is this sort of measurement aspect that, that I really love and so my father was extremely influential in telling me to you know drive towards a goal uh, he never suggested when I was little that it made a difference if you were a boy or a girl thank goodness I mean he didn't say well what are you gonna do you're a girl what he said was what are you gonna do you can do anything you want to do and then a variety of neuroscientists Eric Kandel uh, has been wonderfully inspiring. Uh, the philosophers, uh, I think you go way back and, and maybe you'd list six or so people 
whose writings and thinking, Noam Chomsky, have, have influenced you really, really profoundly. What about I think it would surprise people to know how tractable uh, studies of the um, infant and child brain are. I think they'd be amazed to see uh, these brand new techniques uh, like magnetoencephalography, you know, $2.5 million machine that allows you to non-invasively, completely safely, it's a silent machine, look inside the brain with millimeter spatial resolution, millisecond temporal resolution, and see dynamic changes in the brain as the child is experiencing an emotion, a learning, learning to speak or read, uh, trying to solve a math problem. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very interesting and amazing. My computer with my slides. Got to have those. Mozart, Bach, and the Beatles. Miles Davis. Miles Davis. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> those are my four favorites.